Hello, Carla from Scrap and Create, and today we are going to be doing our base build for our Wonderland slash Sleeping Beauty folio. But before I get started, I wanted just to go through a different ways that we can be attaching our spine to our end pieces. So the standard method that you all would all know is just wrapping cardstock over those chipboard pieces. Now there are pros and cons to different, the three different types I'm going to be showing you. This is a standard wrap album. It has a certain feel to it. And I love the feel of this album. Standard wrap, but the cons are we, these spine pieces are vulnerable to cracking and tearing over time as are this, these top parts of the cardstock. But the feel of this, I love. The spine doesn't have a lot of movement and it just feels nice and secure. So that is your standard wrap album. When you are learning to make these mini albums or folios, people will always say it's a personal preference. Now, if you're just starting out, you don't have a personal preference because you've never made one. So my advice is always try them all and see what feels good to you, what works for you. The next method is the lay flat method. And here the, the front panel, back panel, and the spine are all wrapped independently and then attached by some wings you still have the vulnerability of the, the, the cardstock from tearing, and mine actually tore up here later on, I'm not sure what happened, and cardstock tearing here. Now this one, you have, it's, it's more jiggly. This one just jiggles a little bit more than this one. This one doesn't jiggle much. This is, more flexibility in that spine. So that is method number two that a lot of people use. Then the third method is let's just use some type of tape to attach the spine to the end bits and have the tape all the way around the, the album. This one works well. Um, it does protect your spine and your 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 uh, top edges of your album from ever tearing or ripping and it does look nice now this one has a lot of wiggle room i mean this is a lot of wiggle room and you may not mind that and it does open nicely but so those are the three types of albums that we have. The cons of this one for me is I don't like, I don't like that moving that much. This one moves the least. This one moves the most, has most the most play. And this one is, is somewhere in between. So what we're going to do Today, we are going to make, I'll hopefully try to show you this. We are going to do a standard wrap album. This is a standard wrap album. And then once we made the standard wrap album, I added the black construction tape over the spine pieces here and over the top of the edges here. So this gives you the feel of a standard wrap album, but it's also giving you the, the strength or the resistance to tear on your spine and on the top edges of your album pieces. So that's what we're going to try to do today. So let's get started. So to get started for our little folio, you are going to be cutting two pieces of medium weight chipboard, six and seven inches wide by eight and seven inches tall. This spine piece is going to be 
the same height, eight and seven eighths inches tall by one and a quarter inches wide. So cut, get those cut. So we are going to start, get your pieces cut and put them aside. You're gonna start with just your standard eight and a half by 11 black cardstock. And this is just regular old 65 pound cardstock, less likely to tear. If you have a good 80, 85 pound cardstock that you work with, use that. Um, I just don't have any right now. And technically I probably should be using um, 12, 12 inch cardstock, but I think we can get away with it. We're going, we always put our spine in the middle of our seam and then we're going to have our end bits here and here. So we will have, I'm gonna see if I move this over just a little bit. We're probably only going to have about, um, we'll have at least a half an inch on each side, maybe more on one side, but at least a half an inch and that will be enough. So what I'm going to do first and you probably have done this before, is you just, I put a quarter inch tape here. I'm just going to lay this one down, get it, get it um, lined up top to bottom, and just go under there and pull the score tape. Score tape's pulled, go ahead and burnish that. Now what I'm going to do, I know these are probably going to be a half an inch, but I'm going to make um, a, a guide line here three quarters of an inch. So where is my three quarters of an inch? Is right there. I need guide. I need guidelines. I need guidelines. So I'm going to put my pencil there and draw my guideline. And that is where I want my chipboard. When I lay it down, I want it to be aligned with that guideline. A lot of people eyeball it. My eyes aren't good for eyeballing anymore. So we're going to start with adhering this piece down. So here is the, the middle, here's where the paper comes together here, and here's where the paper comes together up here. Just so you can see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to align the center of my chipboard with the center of, of where I it, um, seamed them together, and just drop that down so is at the same level right in the middle here too. So you just drop it down. Once it's leveled up down here, you can just pull your score tape, line it up and drop it down. I don't show you me doing that because I put my head right on top because I wanna make sure I can see my lines and nobody wants to see the top of my head. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. So I got that piece in, just go ahead and burnish it down. Now I have my score tape on my end bits too. So what I am going to do, I am going to remove my score tape and what I, oh, I need to show you this. How much space do you leave between your spine and your chipboard. You have to leave space or else you, it won't be able to bend. Some people will use quarter inch tape um, in here as their spacer. To me, a quarter inch is just a little too much, but if it works for some people, that's great. That's their personal preference. Book binders use their rule of thumb is whatever chipboard that you are using to make your your mini album your folio you use that chipboard 
glue three pieces together and the width of three pieces of whatever chipboard you're using, that is the space that you allow in, be in between the spine and the end pieces. Technically, what you can do is butt this up to the spine, get your chipboard, line it up to the bottom, push it up against that spine, and drop it down. For whatever reason, and there it looks kind of straight, for whatever reason, when I'm pushing, I always pop it out and I screw it up. So I, I think it's because I don't have much strength in my hands. So what I do is I use my spacer and I draw a line. On both sides. Put it up to the to the spine. Draw my line. So now I have those guidelines to tell me where I'm going to be adhering my chipboard pieces here. And then once and you when you put it in, you put it in at an angle. So you're not contacting much of that score tape. Put it in at an angle, get it lined up here and down here. And once it looks all lined up, you let it drop and it should drop into place. Now, I'm not gonna show you me doing it because I am going to be putting my head way down here. Uh, my eyes are not that great, so I am making sure I'm lined up here and here. If you don't feel comfortable with that, with using score tape, use some beacons on the end bits here on where you're gonna be doing this. So where that score tape is touching here, that beacons will give you some wiggle room so you can move it around. And then once you get it lined up, you can let it drop. But that would, that would be okay too. I, I love beacons too. So I'm going to do that on both sides and be back. So I got my two end bits down. You need to make sure you burnish everything real well. So now we look at our how much space we have. This is three quarters of an inch because we measured that off. So I'm gonna measure this off at three quarters of an inch. And then I'll trim this one down. So everything is down and I put my three quarters of an inch margin up here, mark that down. Um, I must, when I was putting it down, I must not have been paying attention because this side I have like three eighths of an inch. This side I have over an inch. So I pay attention when you're putting it down. So hopefully you did and you're not gonna have this. We can still make this work. Um, you'll see what we're gonna do. We just, we're gonna be adding designer paper so it will be covering that up anyway. So I'm going to trim this to three quarters of an inch and trim this to um, three quarters of an inch and then I'll be back. So everything's been trimmed up. It's basically three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch all the way around, except for my little mess up right here, but we'll make it work. Now, the next thing is we need to miter these corners. The rule of thumb there that works 99% of the time is you, whatever chipboard you have that you are building this, you put two pieces together, two pieces together will you will give you the exact width that you need to miter your end pieces. So just put your two pieces together, draw your line, and then cut. So 
So then just get your scissors and you cut those up where you put your line. Just do it right, I kind of go right outside so I can still see the line when I cut. A lot of people eyeball this too. Like I said, I cannot eyeball. So now we have our corners mitered. Now going to kind of get the cardstock ready to be folded so you just lift it up like you normally do when you're wrapping an album just to kind of get the the paper trained a little bit and you put the weight of the chipboard down on the cardstock on all four sides that's my little side there and then I get my bone folder and I push the cardstock against the edge of the chipboard on all four sides. We're massaging that cardstock. And then these little bits, those little three-eighths of an inch area down here. My bad down there. And then just kind of use your fingers to pull it over. Hopefully it, you've worked it enough that you can just pull it down. All four sides. Most of you have done this plenty of times. Nothing new so far. Get that in a little bit. Now, when you do, those of you that know how to, you mitered your corners, when you pull this down, you want to have this, this piece, this end bit, see how it's sticking up? If you can see how it's sticking up, you want it to drop down, drop down and turn in a little bit. So it's drop down, and try to get it turned in a little bit. So when you miter your edges, they'll be, I'm not even framed, they'll be nice and square. So same thing, go ahead and get this end bit. See how it's sticking there? You drop it, push it in. You can use your nail or bone folder. Push that down and then just a little bit in. And I did not get that one to go in. Push it down and a little bit in. And I'm going to fold it to see how it's going to look. I might trim it a little bit, but that looks good too. So I check all my, I'm not even in frame. I check all my miters before I actually use my tape. So I pushed it down and didn't get it all the way in, but that miter corner still looks good. Same thing. Push that down, push this part, this part down to cover that chipboard right there. And you want it to go in just a little bit. So down and in. And then you check your miter, how's it gonna look? How's it gonna look before you actually adhere it down? I always do a dry, a dry run because I wanna make sure my corners look good. 
So I do that on all of my edges, just so I know how they're going to look and if, if I need to make any, any adjustments to my cuts. And there's that, there's the last one. So they all look pretty good. Now the next step, some people will only use glue to adhere their, um, their cardstock to their chipboard. That is fine if that's your person, if that is your personal preference. The, the advantage of using tape is it gives you a quick hold and it will hold it in. So even if you want to use a hybrid hybrid of tape and glue, the tape will grab and hold it while the glue sets. So you can do that too. So I am going to be applying a, a quarter of inch tape all the way around um, on the top here and around the bottom of my chipboard too. So I'll be right back. So I'm applying my quarter inch tape. I did it all the way around on the top. Now when you get to the chipboard, when I get to the, the gussets here, I actually push the tape in so it touches that side of the card, um, stop cardboard, chipboard, and then pull it back over and then push it down so it touches this um, chipboard piece, this edge, push it down that gusset, push it over so it's touching this chipboard piece, and then go ahead and continue down. So you actually have your tape within those gussets pushed down already. So I'm just going to continue going around, all the way around. So the quarter inch tape is all the way around. So next, I do use art glitter glue for this um, because I'm I'm still slow, but I usually can make this. What I'm going to be doing is adding a bead of art glitter glue next to the chipboard so the cardstock does adhere to the chipboard. And in this open space where there is no glue, I'm going to pull it in the middle to get that attached. And then I want to use my finger to push. I can use this wide part of this bone folder to push it into the gusset like that. And then I'm going to continue like this. Then I'm going to push this into the gusset here. You just need, and then push this out. You just need to be real careful you do not use the pointy edge of your bone folder because you will tear the paper. How do I know? Because I've torn my paper so many times and I've seen other um, scrapbook um, scrapbookers do the same thing. So just be mindful. Use only the this wide part of any bone folder to get that adhered down into that gusset. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull all my tape. So I got my art glitter glue, I'm going to put that bead up next to the chipboard. And then where I don't have any tape, just put it on the chipboard. Pull it up towards the middle, push it down into that gusset here and here, and then just adhere this down this way, push this, I have to push it towards my, my right so this is easier for me like that. And then go ahead and use your bone folder to make sure it adheres on the top part of the, the, the cardstock. 
where that glue was so it's nice and smooth up there. And then you're going to do the same thing for the other side. You can tell I'm not a, a, a glue person. I don't have good glue, glue control. that up, get it into that gusset, and then over into this gusset, and then pull it up. Spread that glue out. Pull it up. And spread that glue out. bit of glue come out on this side and go ahead and do the top so that cardstock adheres well to that chipboard. I'm just going to go over with my bone folder again. Good. Now we're going to do the small pieces. Which one should I do first, the hard one or the easy one? Let's start with the easy one. <laughs> so, same thing, bead of glue. Be mindful of your miter corners. You wanna make sure you get those. I'm probably gonna have to put my head down so I can see them. Get that down. Pull that one up. And do this one down and pull that one up. So those mitered corners look pretty, pretty darn good. Now let's see what I can do with this little guy down here. Um, a little bit of glue down here. Don't have much room in here. So make sure that's pushed down and this side's pushed down. I'm gonna bring it up to really pull because I don't have much there. So there's our corners on our our messed up side. So they're still they still look really good and like I said we're going to be covering this you can either cover it with black cardstock or just wait and use your designer paper. So that. Now we're going to cover this spine with a piece of black cardstock. Um, it's going to be eight and seven eighths minus about a, a little bit less than eight and seven eighths. So minus one eighth or one sixteenth. So it's not going to be quite as tall as the chipboard. And it's going to be four inches just because two inches is right in the middle and I'm going to be using the middle mark so um, it's easier for me to lay it down. So I'm going to cut my piece eight and seven eighths minus one sixteenth by four inches wide. So I have this piece cut. So this is the two inch, so this is going to be um, half, half, half. And I marked at the half mark on my spine here. So that's where we're going to be lining it up. Now this is going to be the side that I have the tape on. So I got my little tick marks there. What I'm going to be doing is put a piece of score tape 
right down the center from, and this is going to be 3 eighths of an inch, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go from one tick mark down to the other, straight as I can there, just so I know that's, I'm going to be pulling that piece first. And then I have two inch tape, so I'm going to be applying two inch tape. So I'm just going to continue this by filling this in with score tape and I'll be back. So I filled this in with score tape. Make sure you burnish everything down real well. Okay, so this is the side that's obviously going in. I made my half inch, my half inch, my two inch mark where it is the center. So now I can center it up here and center it down here. So it's going to be like that. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to remove my center score tape that I applied where that tick mark was. Um, and I know it's this one because it's a different size. I used the 3 8 this is a half an inch. So I'm going to pull that off. And then I am going to put my head way down here so I can make sure I got it um, got it um, adjusted top to bottom, so I'll be right back. So once I put my head way down here and I make sure it's, it's even top to bottom and it's centered, then use your finger, burnish that middle score tape, and now all you have to do is lift these, pull the, lift this up and pull the first couple, but you do not want to go over that gusset. Um, you want to do something when you, before you get to that gusset. So pull the tape. That one's not going over the gusset, but this, the second one will. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly roll it, and I'm going to roll it into that gusset with my finger. So roll it into that gusset. And these are easy. They are just going to be adhered down. So same thing. Go to the other side. Here's one. Two. And again, kind of roll, push that down and get it to go into that gusset. Use your finger to get it pushed into that gusset. You can use a bone folder too. And then pull the other two the last score tapes. This one tore there. Okay, where is that bone folder? I need that bone folder. It's my, there it is. The one I trust myself with the most. So there's my gussets. Again, do not use the sharp part of your bone folder. It will tear the paper. And there you have your wrapped album. Nothing's torn here, nothing's torn here, no tearing at all up and through here. So, and it feels good. This feels solid. There is 
little to no movement in here. So this is what I I am I showed you uh, for when you see the tutorial, the album I made is just like this. Um, this one's this one's different because I am going to apply some construction tape on my on around here. So if you if you are happy with this and, and this is what I used for um, the tutorial, go ahead and just stop here and you can start the tutorial. Those of you that are interested in seeing how I'm going to be using the construction tape just to protect my spine and the edges, go ahead and continue watching. So the first thing what I'm going to do is from the middle of the gusset, so here's the gusset, so the middle of this gusset, I'm going to measure out a half an inch here, middle of the gusset, half an inch here, and I'm going to draw with my ruler a straight line to connect those. Same thing here, from the middle of the gusset to here, half an inch, middle of the gusset to here, half an inch. Then on the flip side, you find your gussets. You can you can kind of see the gusset here, right there. Measure out half an inch, go down here, half an inch, same thing. Find the gusset, half an inch, and half an inch. Half an inch, I wish I would stamp frame. And then just connect your tick marks. This is just gonna be a guideline of where you're going to be putting the construction tape. So you have some idea of where you need to go. And that one doesn't even look straight. It's, yeah, I guess it's straight. So I'm going to start on the outside So this is one inch construction tape. Now you want, to, where's the end? You want to start on the outside of your spine. And I'm going to have like a, at least an inch hanging over. And I am going to be putting the edge of the tape on that half inch line that we just drew. Just pull it across, kind of following that half inch line that you drew. Ooh, got stuck there. Should be doing this on my mat. It doesn't stick as much. So then you pull this up. And then you're going to pull this around. Now this piece down here, you're going to pull it real tight. Pull it tight and put it into that gusset and put it down. Now this piece, you're going to be following this line and you're gonna go down just past where you put this tape in. So about um, a fourth of an inch away from the, the edge here. So follow, pull this real tight. Do you want to get a tight fitting on the, this edge right here? You want this tape to be tightly pulled against that edge. Let me see if I can. Normally my head would be all the way down. I'm trying to do this so I can show you. So pull that tape, follow that line, that guideline, going into that gusset, follow that guideline, go into that gusset, there. And the best way I found to tear the tape so it's straight is with my this little thing 
I just put it up to where I want to tear it, push down and pull, and it rips the tape nice and straight. So we got one side in, burnish that. If there's any wrinkles, usually they will come out. Don't see any wrinkles. So that's what the tape looks like on the outside. So there is our covering of that where the spine joins the chipboard. This will never tear on you. So th this will protect your spine forever. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Let's see, which side did I start on? I started on this this side, yeah, so I'll start on the same one here. Same thing. Where is my... This is so hard for me to see in black on black. Okay, follow that line. to wrinkle this piece. Follow that line. And now you want to lift this up, turn it over, get this piece pulled up tight. You want it tight against this edge down here. Pull it up, fold it over, and get it into that gusset. Yay! Now we're just going to go with this piece following, pull it up tight, pull it up tight so it's against that, that chipboard. Follow that line. And then get down to the end, get this, or you can use scissors if you feel comfortable with scissors. My scissors always get stuck on my tape. And just pull. And that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this. And on the other side, There, so now we have, so now our spine is forever protected and it's making our book a little bit stiffer, but that is okay. That is okay. It's still going to be able to open and close and it'll, especially once you train it, but it feels really, really good. Now, if you want, you can add the um, the construction tape on the ends here. Uh, I tend not to do that, but I do know that sometimes they do they do tear. I will try it, and there's no guarantee that it's going to to work. But I will try it just to see if it does work, because this is not the one we're using for the tutorial. So this is just good to have. So let's see if we can go ahead and apply the construction tape all the way around. I've watched lots of videos on how people do it and people are just like zip, 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 cut, 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 and they're done. Um, Paul Ford has a good video on using the construction, the black construction tape. Oops, excuse me. I, I just can't do it that way. My brain, my I'm just not coordinated enough. So I'm gonna try something different and I'll be right back. 
So for this one, what we're going to, I drew a line that's 3 8 of an inch all the way around. So that's going to be our guide line for our tape. We're going to start with the two long ends first. So get your roll of construction tape. I always have to find the end. Black on black. So hard to see. And I'm going to start at this end and I'm going to have it butting up to the edge here. Just we can trim off a little bit if it goes over a little bit, but we're going to try and get it as close as we can to the edge and then just follow, follow that line. When you get to those gussets, make sure you push it into those gussets. Push it in. And then, where's my cutter? Where's my thing that I used to cut? I just had to, here it is. Pull that and see if I can cut. So with this one, what I'm going to do, I want this to roll over. I want this piece to roll over. I want it to get attached to the, the chipboard here, and then I'm going to roll it over. So I'm gonna pull it, and I want it to get attached to that top part of the chipboard right there. And now we can bring this down and roll it up. Pull it real tight, get it into those gussets, I can pull it real tight. If there's wrinkles in this tape, they're usually pretty forgiving and you can get them out, but you do have to pull this tight against the chipboard. And on this side, So it should be like that across the across the top and then on the inside if you can see black on black and then I'm going to just get my foam folder and get any wrinkles that that I may have out And then you're just going to do the exact same thing on this top side. Start with one end nearly um, up with that edge of the, the album there. And then just roll your tape. And there's my cutter. And cut right at the edge of the, the album. Same thing, we want this to be adhered to the chipboard, so I'm going to be pulling it over that chipboard. Get any wrinkles out, go into those gussets. So that is that is done. Now I am just going to trim. There's a little bit of overhang, so I'm just going to get my scissors. See where there's just a little bit of overhang here. If you can see that. So for the next part, for our short edges, we are going to be following this line, but we are going to be leaving about an inch, starting uh, about an inch off of, let me get my mat, off of the edge. 
so I don't like it too, so that would be to that way there. So use my mat. So roughly an inch off following that line. So this is going to overhang about an inch. Follow that line again, then cut. So this you're going to lift up. You are not going to roll it over. You are going to miter this. You are going to miter like we did the corners here. You're just going, um, I don't think I can, if I use this, it'll probably stick, but I'll see if I can put that there. And I am going to cut it with my X-Acto knife if I can. I don't know if I can, let me see. Can't really see what I'm doing. So I use my X-Acto knife there. I'm gonna use, come around to this edge Use my miter, my little miter tool. Use my exacto knife. Go away, exacto knife. Can't get to tell if it's cutting. So it cut. Okay. So now we have our miters. So now I forgot what I was. So how did I do this? I I did a mock up one. So I think what I did see these. So it's mitered like this, right? These little wings right here. You're going to let's see. Pull that in. Pull that in, and then you're going to tuck this little piece up. Fold this in, tuck this piece in. So you want that piece tucked in and, and I want that piece rolled over the top just like when we were mitering our paper. Roll that piece over. I want this more stri like straight, like um, straight like this. Let me show you if my scissors will cut straight from the edge of the chipboard. I want that cut straight. See how that's not straight? That's not rolled straight, so go to the edge of the chipboard and just cut that so it's straight. So now you have those like that and like that. Put those edges in, and now we're going to pull this over. And let's see what they look like. Not bad, not bad. So you can see this, well, he can't see. Let me, let me go ahead and burnish them a little bit. Where's my camera? There is the miter. Do you see the miter right there? And on this side, this one's not quite as good, but it's still pretty darn good. Looks pretty good. Okay, now let's try it on the other side. Yeah, turn it over this way. I'm gonna have an inch on each side.
lift this up. Do not want to roll it over yet. And now we're going to miter these corners. So we got your miter thing here. And maybe I can cut straighter this time. I'm going to cut. I think what happened is I, I yeah, I didn't cut very well there. But I can trim that off. Doesn't matter. And miter this corner. So let's see, what do we have? I have, so I want to pull this over. So I want to pull this over, but I want this to go in. That's what I'm trying to do. I want this to go over and I want this to go in over the chipboard and over the chipboard so i got those pieces in over the chipboard in over the chipboard this time i'm just going to pull it straight down will it work let's see um I want that rolled in just a little bit. I'm going to pull this one down. That looks pretty good. Same thing on this side. Pull it down. And burnish. So there you can see this one these look pretty these you can these look really good these look good kind of figured it out from the first time and on the front it looks real good so once you have your album like this nothing will ever the spine won't tear these edges won't tear and you're going to be adding your uh, designer paper over this so you're not going to see the edges here you'll just see um, the a little bit of black reveal so that was my idea on how to make a strong wrapped album so it feels good in your hand the spine will never Will, will never um, tear the, the top will never tear nothing will ever tear so I am going to probably use this to build something because I've already made our our album but what, let me know what you think if you think this is a good idea there's there's no right way to make any album there's a hundred and diff hundreds of different ways to get to the same end. It depends on what you want. So that's our little album. And I think it looks really good. I'm going to practice on these corners, but I think that's, that worked pretty well. I just need a little bit of practice, but for the first time, hey, those, those corners look pretty darn good, I think. So, on to the tutorial.